Have I ever, did I ever tell you on this program about my effort to get a leading member of the Progressive Caucus to introduce the idea of a 21st century economic bill of rights to the caucus. Have I told you about my encounter? No. Okay. So wait, first give, so Margaret, I don't know if you're familiar, but Harvey um, and um, Alan Minsky created this 21st century bill of rights. Well, you didn't create it. You added to what was FDR's. Right. And there are, and there are other academics from Mark Paul, young guy to Derek Hamilton who's up at New School for Social... So it's I mean, this idea engineers. that is like this 21st Century Bill of Rights. By the way, message before I forget, Steve Grumbine really needs to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about something having to do with hi history and FDR. And oh, I'm high, so that's as good as you're going to get right now. Okay. So, but that's the premise, <laughs> Margaret, of the 21st Century Bill of Rights, just so yeah, you know yeah. where he's going with this yeah, story. I mean, it's an economic bill of rights, 21st Century Economic Bill of Rights for all Americans, which would include, just so you understand, such things as a guaranteed job at a living wage, Mm -hmm. Guaranteed right to organize a union and bargain collectively, uh, guaranteed national health care, guaranteed comfortable housing. I mean, it's all of the things that people need and that the overwhelming majority of Americans, whether they're Republican or Democrats, actually right. believe should happen. So anyhow, th th at an event last year, I figured I had an opportunity to go to talk one on one with a member of the the Progressive Caucus. I can't. I can't offer that person's name because it was meant to be a completely off the record conversation. Okay. So I would love to, just because of what happened. So, so I, 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 I'm, I will say it's a him. Okay. Okay. So I said to him. I know it's a him. I said to him, you know, here's the secret. I explained this stuff to him, and he looked at me. You know, you know how when. When you're talking to a congressional representative and they really don't want to talk to you, it's like a, a glazing effect. Right? Yes. <laughs> and he said to, and, but then I sort of, I could tell, and I said to him, wait, if we walk down Main Street in any city, and most cities will be where Democratic voters are, so it's not like I'm prejudicing this. If we walk down that street and we stop people and ask them, what does the Democratic Party stand for? They will first not be able to answer, and then they'll answer us in the Republican talking points terms. Okay. Right. Okay. And I and and I said this economic bill of rights would be a dynamic force for the Progressive Caucus inside of the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party has no story and no vision. None. Okay. <laughs> and an agenda is not enough. People forget what's in an agenda. Okay. So. And he turned to me and he said, I swear to God, he turned to me and he said, you know, Nancy always says our values win elections. Nancy Pelosi. I, we knew who you meant. Okay. Well, wait. So understand, this is a progressive who was fully aware of where I stand politically. And he had the audacity, the fucking audacity to quote Nancy Pelosi to me. <laughs> But but it's not that, I and mean, that was the silly part of what I said. The this is not a real is, progressive. This is just someone in that caucus, is what you're saying. Well, actually, I can tell you, this is a person who's actually headed the caucus. Okay, okay you're kind of like I, I, I I'm about to give away. He also. Now, I know you're I know, I'm pretty sure I know who you're talking. About. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, I'm yeah, I do. <laughs> well, because people think he's a progressive, and I'm just like all of a sudden no. that name gets thrown around, and I'm thinking. <laughs> No, he's not. Um, he seems, and, he's supposed to be the labor guy in the progressive caucus. Hey, you know what? Uh, yeah. The truth is, uh, you know, w Wisconsin, I always say, is one of the best examples of a state that should be extremely populist. And in many ways it is, but it's finding itself to the GOP almost every time. Because the Democrats don't offer them anything. They and the Democrats don't even spend money to win. No, and the GOP are much better snake oil salesmen. They and are. it's not hard. It's it's not hard to see how it's happening. I, I it, always remember this little factoid. The Democrats lost 900 seats across the country when Obama was in office in state yeah. state houses in yeah. Congress. Who was, the, who was the who was the who was the chair of the Democratic uh, uh, National Committee at that time? I just want to hear it just one time. It was Debbie who, Wasserman Schultz. OK, I just want yeah. to hear it. It was just saying that's the they, you know. So they don't care. They don't they I, they really do not care that a state like Wisconsin 
There's no reason why Democrats should be, I think they have a Democratic governor, but mostly Republicans who thwart everything the governor does. Okay, so um, I'll tell you, I said before, working class people are neither stupid nor lack memory. And basically speaking, they will, they may not be able to give you the details, but they will never forget who it was that gave them NAFTA. Yep. Yeah. And yep. as a consequence, why are they going to, why would they trust the Democrats? Oh, no. Way, you know? no idea what you've just unleashed. You all know. Well, if you decided to talk about what I passed back in 1993, I have to admit that uh, it may not have been good for you, but it was really good for me. Uh, Jen, how you doing? Uh, look, I've passed a lot of legislation in my life. Oh, yeah. They always want to talk about what the GOP did and how I had to negotiate with Mr. Gingrich all those years, but never forget what we did during our first two years. We got NAFTA. We started our normal trade relations with China. We got our crime bill. We set in motion the opportunity to pass that wonderful Telecom Act legislation. And then when Newt got in there, we did it even better. You know what we did when Newt came into office? We managed to work together to unravel Glass-Steagall. I mean, come on, how much better come my presidency and possibly <laughs> well, hey bill you fucked up one thing you failed oh. to privatize social security look we came really really close to privatizing social security <laughs> and the only reason we did not do that is because <laughs> slick really got a little too handsy with an intern and uh as it turns out uh, uh, i pay, I, right. I pay for it really but, you know, if anyone doesn't know the story is that when the story broke it was at a time when newt gingrich's Personal life was, was, he had no desire to face the consequences of his own personal life's, you know, unraveling. And, and they just couldn't go ahead with it. Well, uh, I, I do understand that, you know, Newt had, and I had quite a bit in common. We certainly had our uh, competition, if you know what I mean. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the decision was made that our th triangulation of politics in America was going to do everything in its capacity yeah. to make sure that the workers absolutely got screwed. But the great news is, <laughs> is that I got rich. Hillary, well, you know, she tried and she failed. And, you know, at least the American people weren't stupid enough to put us in there for a third term. But, uh, man, we really would have enjoyed that power. You should be in prison. I, there is no such thing as prison. You see, this is the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just explain one thing to all y'all. There's a reason why the Clintons will never go down. Mm. I passed the crime bill. I am the answer to all the problems in this country. There's oh. a reason. When we pass this wonderful, wonderful somebody get, bill. Somebody get the cane and I can't go. You're gross. When we incarcerate black and brown people for the sake of profit, you really think they would ever put me in prison? Go away. Come on. And a very happy Festivus to each and every one of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.